If you are new to lasering acrylic or you'd like some new tips and pointers on becoming a laser cutting and etching master, then let's dive right in. Acrylic comes in a zillion colors and thicknesses, styles and textures. Let's talk about etching first. I've got a few examples to go over and one of them is kind of weird, but it totally works. Now, we all know what etching is, also referred to as raster or rastering in the laser world. Here's a piece that was etched too lightly. The problem might have been that it was going too fast and the power was too light. And this one is the opposite. It's a little too hard. The laser levels were probably too powerful or the speed was too slow. Once you know your machine and have nailed down your favorite settings, let's get into the four different examples and solve the problems that might arise. First, I'm going to start off with taking off the masking protective layer. Bonus tip, if it is stubborn to get off, get out a hair dryer and warm it up a little and it'll come right off. Here I'm etching out a blue duck because I've never seen a blue duck before. <laughs> If you get the reference, you're at least as old as I am. When we have the masking off, we see haze around the etching and the cut lines. Of course, this is no problem for us because you can buff that out with our number two Novus Plastic Polish. I consider this a must if you are working with acrylics. Next, we'll see what happens if we were to leave the masking on. Since I took it off, I'm gonna be putting on my own masking with the super wide tape. It's the same as painter's tape, essentially. I also replace any other plastic masking that you might find on an acrylic because you never wanna etch through the plastic layer. It just melts and gets all yucky. I use the exact same settings. Now that it's done, we can save ourselves the hassle of picking off the masking with this Gorilla duct tape. Another handy tip whenever you are using masking. When you have them side by side, you can see this one didn't need any buffing. The etching is slightly lighter as it had to engrave through the masking layer, which is fine and what I would recommend for a more simple design. Let's rewind and go over the difference between cast and extruded acrylics. Cast acrylics are poured into giant molds and the thicknesses can vary, but it is the best for engraving into. Extruded is squished between rollers, so the thickness is more consistent, but it melts easier, making the engraving look more melted rather than etched. Okay, back to the cast clear acrylic. We are going to coat this in a thin layer of dish soap. Not too thick now. I'm etching this with pretty low power settings and a higher speed for a nice light, but bold etching. Easy as that. Once it's done etching, you just need a quick rinse under some water and you're ready to go. Just for funsies, I'm going to fill in the engravings with a little bit of rub and buff to make it stand out a little more. I did a video on painting your laser cut crafts. I'll link that below so you can get comfy with painting your project. For the next project, we're going to be using the soap method on this two-tone color acrylic that has a metallic silver on top of a thin black layer. It's a lovely type of acrylic and I'd love to see people use it more. It comes in so many different colors. After getting the soap off and a little buffing, I'm gonna glue these two pieces together. My favorites for acrylics are either the Weld On number three or four, which is water thin, and number 16 here, which is thicker. They're both solvent based and essentially melts the acrylic to itself for a super great bond. This type of two color acrylics come in a bunch of colors, so consider it for your next project. Another neglected acrylic is mirrored acrylics. These also come in every color of the rainbow. I'm gonna laser the back side, which will take the mirror away, as well as the front side, which will reflect into itself for a super fun effect. I'm using a 40 watt CO2 laser, so it might depend on what type of laser you have or the type of materials you're able to use. But I have a super handy tip for that coming up. To make the mermaid stand out, I'm going to fill it in with a bit of cheap acrylic paint. It's so pretty. This would be such a fun mirror if it was like bigger, maybe a frame for it. There's just so many possibilities. Not done yet. I've been holding back my super favorite thing to do with laser cut acrylics and it's not as scary as you might think. I left the clear plastic masking on these since I didn't etch them, but the edges needed a little bit of sanding down. Now we're ready to a drum roll please. Heat shaping. That's right, I'm moving the party to my stovetop and putting a silicone mat down to keep everything in place. I'm gonna be using a basic old heat gun. The trick is simply using a low setting and keeping it moving. 
I've got all my tools ready to go. This is a time sensitive thing and it's obviously hot. So take care not to burn yourself. Heat resistant gloves, pot holders, tongs, all of these would be super handy for this. Once you get it into the shape you want, just keep it in place while it cools down, which will happen quickly. Not every type of acrylic is great for this, such as the mirrored kind or some of the two-toned acrylics. Trial and error is everything. The unicorn horn became a necklace and I hung a crystal at the end of the spiral. If you give this a try, you will be so impressed with yourself and so will everyone else. If you have a diode laser or are worried about what type of materials you can use, I have some recommendations for the best places to order laser materials that are categorized for the type of laser you have. Links for them down below. If all these choices are a bit overwhelming, there's so many other materials you can use with your laser. That's why I made this materials master playlist. Meet me over there and find out what else you can conquer with your laser and inspire your creativity.